Hi guys and welcome back to Lanwen Builds and a warm welcome to Load Abbey, the private residence of the Bishop of Kingsworthy. Load Abbey is based off the country house of Anglesey Abbey, which is just a few miles out of Cambridge, just next to the village of Load, whose name I actually stole for the name of the Abbey, but I hope they'll be fine with that. I'm sure they will be. But this build is my thank you to you guys for 500 subs because somehow we've just hit that, which is just amazing. But back to the house. This house has quite a few outbuildings, including a walled garden, muse, and a water mill. So where better to start than the entrance, which has these two large flanking walls around it, and instead of a gatehouse, has a gatekeeper's cottage for the gatekeeper to live in. So he can easily open the gates to let the posh folk in and clergy members as well. The cottage is nothing fancy, otherwise it would be a bit of a gatekeeper's palace, but has a nice tucked away vibe to it, and it's also quite similar in style to the muse as they were built at the same time under the same owner. He has his own little garden where he can grow some produce for himself and a tool shed for when he decides to do some gardening or maintenance and yes, the staff here are very talented, they can do a lot of different jobs. The garden's very simple with just a few carrots and sweet berries and also a nice little wheelbarrow to carry them around in and it's just perfect for the entrance to the bishop's estate. Now with that done, we head up the path to the centrepiece, the abbey, which I decided to build first so I could figure out how the rest of the place would fit around it. The first part I started on is the oldest part, which was built in the 13th century as a priory, which was then dissolved and sold to the Crown Loyal Bishop of Kingsworthy to be his private out of town residence. This garden facade is Jacobean, but Interestingly, the right side is about 400 or so years older than the left, but both are in the same sort of style. So I actually did do a bit of an interior on this one actually. Yeah, I know it's quite a rare occasion, but I only ended up doing a few rooms until I gave up because it just ended up taking so long and the video would have just been even more delayed. But the first of which is this living room, which has this large fireplace, a few chairs and some large timber beams in the ceiling. When the abbey was extended in the 16th century, they added on these huge chimneys because the abbey was always really cold and the bishop hated a cold abbey. So he added in some more fireplaces and just added these really nice large chimneys on on top. Next, it's onto the entrance, which was also part of the original priory. So it has these huge dormers as well as a Gothic window, which was added in the middle of the 18th century by the Bishop Sumner is he wanted to extend the abbey to host more prestigious events and just to say, I built that, to all of his guests. Nearly the whole of this view is 13th century, apart from another addition by Sumner, but was spared the dissolution when most of the monastery was taken down and sold. Most of the stones were later used to build houses, so some of the houses in Whiteburg were built using stones from Lode Abbey. <laughs> Lode stones, get it? <laughs> This part of the house still has the room, which was a place of prayer and reflection for the monks, but is now used by the bishop as a dining room, and has this beautiful decorated floor and vaulted ceiling. It also has some shields hung on the walls from the many visits the bishops had been on over the years, along with a couple of tapestries which seem to be everywhere in the abbey at this point. The fire is always burning bright in this room, to keep it nice and warm, but I think it would be a good idea if one of the bishops just added some glass to the windows, as they don't have any, which may explain why it's so cold. This part being built here is the extension that Sumner made that I just mentioned, and is very in keeping with the rest of the build, as Sumner was quite a good architect. It seems that he was a bit of a bishop by day and an architect by night. Usually I texture my builds all at once at the end, but as different parts are made at different times, I needed to texture them differently as I went along. And you'll notice later that there's only stripped oak on this part of the house, as it's by far the oldest, so because of that it's the most weathered. The buttresses are also a later addition, as the abbey was leaning and sagging under its own weight, so one of the bishops built buttresses all around the oldest parts of the building, just so it didn't fall down. This whole left wing of the abbey, which I'm starting on now, was added by a good friend, Bishop Sumner. He just really wanted to make the abbey bigger, didn't he? But it's designed to look very Elizabethan and was actually added in the mid 1850s, so it's about 700 years older than the oldest part. 
It's got this beautiful gothic bay window on the front and back which makes for a great centerpiece for this side and it has a few buttresses that have been added to make it look as though it was built at the same time as the rest of the building. It also has this tower or turret on the back which was made to hold a bell but it turned out it wasn't structurally strong enough to do that so instead it's just an empty flight of stairs which is a bit disappointing in my opinion but there is a flagpole on top which will have a flag of Whiteberg flying at all times which is just a big plus point because the bishop is just a very patriotic man. You might have seen I set out a bit of the floor plan earlier and I'm finishing it off now but the bad thing is I was only able to find the floor plan of the ground floor not the first floor or the servants quarters in the attic. So I still got the option of doing a ground floor but that isn't very likely as I'm not the best interior builder and I don't really have the time for it at the moment but I may end up coming back and finishing it off one day. These parts with the stone roofs would have been lead in real life and were actually built by the last owner of the real Anglesey Abbey, Lord Fairhaven, in the 1930s which is a bit out of the range of the server but as they're in the style of the original abbey on the server, they're newly built just at the turn of the century. I've just put in this large wall across the front of the left wing of the abbey that creates two courtyards, one outside the front of the abbey and another larger one that is next to the small mews which is where after the guests have been dropped off at the front of the house the drivers would drive around to this courtyard and go park in the mews. The mews is just very small and simple and was only built to hold a few coaches and carriages as it was built when cars weren't a thing. But now that cars are a thing, the bishop has got a couple of motors for when he's travelling to and from Kingsworthy or doing the rounds around the local churches, so they're all stored in there now. Now it's back around to the garden facade to build the garden because you can't have a garden facade without a garden, it just doesn't work. This part of the garden is a large, neatly kept lawn with a few paths and a hedge on one side, which once you go over it takes you into the rose garden. If you've ever been to Anglesey Abbey, it has this huge rose garden which is just begging to be made here at Lode. It's currently summer here so all the roses are out in full bloom, just adding a splash of colour to the house and it's a favourite place for the bishop to take a walk and to stop and smell the roses. All the roses here are very ancient, mostly from the original rose beds that were put in when the bishops first bought the house and others added by Sumner to make this huge rose garden possible. They're all really colourful and vibrant and make the house look gorgeous in the summer, even though, well, for a rose garden, it has a lot of tulips and not a lot of roses, which is because the bishop seems to buy them from the United Lowlands a lot. I have no idea why. This enclosed lawn area is lined with statues of former bishops and other mementos that have been picked up on travels, like a few urns and a statue that was given to one of the bishops by the Pope for some unknown reason, like literally no one knows, it's a bit suspicious if you ask me, I mean you never know what he could be up to. All this land I pre-landscaped, smoothing out the terrain, adding roads and some big forests, but with a project like this you can always over plan and it's best to do some as you go along, which is why throughout this you're probably going to see me building forests and whatnot along the way. Here is a true staple of a country house, a walled garden. I thought a country house without a walled garden didn't exist until I remembered Anglesey Abbey doesn't have one. Yes, I know, it's a crime punishable by death only. I'm just kidding. But seriously, what is Anglesey Abbey playing at when they didn't build one? So I decided to build one for them. This is a very interesting walled garden and unlike any other I've ever built. Come to think of it, the whole formal garden is like anything I've ever built because it's on a 15 degree angle which made it a logistical nightmare and made it take a lot longer than it needed to. But I think having everything on different angles helps to make the estate feel less linear and a lot more natural so it was worth it in the end. The walled garden at Lode is the main place that provides food for the house and the bishop other than the local market all of the produce grown by the gardening team is top quality. This is another addition by Sumner and he wanted to employ more people to work at the house by taking them out of the workhouses or off of the streets. Just what a nice guy. 
The walled garden has this little gardening shed tucked away next to it for the gardener to live in, who's in charge of keeping the walled garden, formal garden and the rest of the grounds under control. He's just another very talented member of staff here. The formal gardens at Lode have been partially inspired by the ones at Anglesey Abbey, with the half octagon shaped one being inspired by there, but the larger part on the left I actually made up. It's very simple, made up of a number of circles and straight lines which just make it feel really nice for the eye to look at. I really like how the formal gardens aren't right in front of the house, but are more tucked away behind the walled garden and going right up to the hedge line. The formals are topped off with a nice sandstone fountain that ended up getting undebugged, so most of the central flowers got flooded, but nobody needs to know that happened. Eventually, all of this land back here gets turned into some type of wood at some point, but first I need to texture all the land and put a few bushes and some grass around to make it feel like a proper woodland, not just a flat bit of grass blocks that have had trees put on top because that just looks so unnatural. A stroll through the woods of an evening is beautiful and gorgeous through this part of the bishop's private woodland, I've got to say. The final part of the gardens is this, the Winter Walk, based off the Winter Walk at Anglesey, which is this part of wood that's just birch trees, just silver birch, which I bet looks amazing in the snow. Uh, a fun fact about it, the gardeners at Anglesey Abbey actually scrubbed the trees to make them as white and shiny as possible. As do our gardeners here at Lode, as the bishop loves a magical walk through the trees on a summer evening. And here, to end it off, is the quirkiest part of the whole estate, the water mill. I don't know how many country houses have their own water mill, I mean, especially on the server, I don't think there's a single one yet. But here at Lode, there is indeed one. It was built in the mid 1700s and is clad in white painted wooden planks similar to what you'd find somewhere in the United Colonies. The mill has got this really nice overhanging dormer sort of winching point at the top. And you've guessed it, that's for winching up the grain to be milled. And that just helps to add an interesting point to the otherwise just straight and flat spruce roof. It hasn't actually been constantly working since it was made in the 1700s because it was actually abandoned until Sumner bought it up when he became bishop and since then, through a lot of makeovers, it was restored to its full working order and trust me, it was in quite a state when he bought it. It was so bad that the milling wheel wasn't there anymore and a lot of the timbers had been rotted away but through a bit of TLC and a lot of money, it ended up becoming what it's like today. The real life mill doesn't have this little mill worker's cottage next to it, but it did exist once, but was knocked down when the mill was closed. But, as the bishop's mill at load is still working, there's still a miller's cottage next to it, even if the miller doesn't mill every day. He still lives next to the mill, as who wouldn't want to live right next to this beautiful river? This road over the river will hopefully one day go to a little village or hamlet called Lode, which I will make a video on. It will be a nice one to have a go at because I haven't built a village on this server yet, and I mean I haven't actually built one in this style as far as I can remember, as I've only built a city and now a lovely abbey as well. And there we are with one complete abbey left to showcase. So I'm going to cut to the cinematic so you can have a look at the finished house and grounds and I will catch up with you with a little rundown at the end.
So that's it guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching me build this country estate as much as I enjoyed building it. I actually had quite a few estates to choose from for this video, but I decided to go for this slightly smaller one, just as a little taster and I love how it turned out. So when I hit the next big milestone, which will be a thousand, I may build another one or instead another one of the big projects that needs to be done for Kingsworthy that I've been putting off for quite a while now. With that being said, if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like and also a sub if you want to see more and I will see you in the next one. Bye.